This episode of the Memory Palace is brought to you by Amazon Prime's exclusive Lore. It's a chilling six-episode anthology series from executive producer of The Walking Dead and an executive producer of The X-Files based on the podcast phenomenon with over 70 million downloads. Creator and narrator Aaron Mankey explores the most terrifying tales throughout history, takes a myth that is rooted in historical folklore, and twists it, exposing timeless terrors that still haunt us today. Real life can scare you to death. Watch exclusively on Amazon Prime Video this October, starting on Friday the 13th. This episode of Memory Palace is brought to you by our friends at Article, makers of fine furniture with fantastic industrial and mid-century and Scandinavian designs. Also the makers of The Lamp that is lighting this script as I read it. They have everything you need at Article for your home, including brand new, a whole array of fine leather couches. These are really beautiful, extraordinarily well-made, just like everything they've got. And for $49, they will ship anything, including a large, beautiful leather couch to your front door, regardless of size. And you can get $50 off your first order of $100 or more at article.com slash memory palace. That's article.com slash memory palace. This is the Memory Palace. I'm Nate DeMeo. Spare a thought for Edwin Booth. First, let's remember that his brother, John Wilkes, was an actor. And if he weren't an actor, then he doesn't kill Lincoln. Because that night that Abe and Mary go to Ford's Theater to take in a show, John Wilkes Booth can just walk around and no one thinks anything of it. Because the ushers and stagehands and whatever security they had there all recognize him. He's John Wilkes Booth, the actor. Of course he's just hanging around in the hallway. And he's John Wilkes Booth, the famous actor. From the acting booths. His father was Junius Brutus Booth, England's greatest Shakespearean actor. Which is really saying something. And he moved to the United States and became America's greatest Shakespearean actor. Which is saying less, but is still pretty cool. The Booths were an acting dynasty, going way back. So it's kind of like if Drew Barrymore killed Abraham Lincoln. Even correcting for $1865, the way that fame worked back then to the way it does now. Picture a world in which Drew Barrymore kills Abraham Lincoln. And then let's spare a thought for Edwin Booth. Edwin Booth was Junius' second son, and he wanted to be an actor like his famous father. At 16, he made his stage debut in Boston, in a small role supporting his dad's Richard III. He wasn't very good. And his dad, with the ego that goes along with being the two-time reigning greatest Shakespearean actor, and the belligerence that goes along with being a mean drunk, told him to stop acting. He wasn't good at it. And the greatest Shakespearean actor cannot be diminished by having his son going around in public not being good at acting. And Edwin was cowed. He didn't give up acting entirely, but he mostly spent his time following in his father's footsteps. Literally, making sure his old man didn't pass out drunk and miss a curtain. But a few years later, his father was out of the picture. He died from drinking. But not from drinking drinking. He died after he got sick from drinking water from the Mississippi River which was a bad idea even in 1852. After his father's death, Edwin threw himself into his craft. He studied. He toured tirelessly, playing the great roles in mining camps in the Sierra Nevada, taking on Shakespeare and Marlowe at colonial backwaters in Australia and in what we now call Hawaii. And when he came back, he was a great actor. He outshone his other acting brothers, Junius Jr. and John Wilkes. And by the time the Civil War came, some theater critics say he outshone his father. He was the most famous actor in America. Some said he was the greatest Hamlet anywhere in the world. So when John Wilkes Booth killed Abraham Lincoln, he was not merely Drew Barrymore. He was also the brother of the best and most famous actor in America. You might try to say it was a bit like if Billy Baldwin killed Lincoln. Except it's somehow back when Alec Baldwin was a genuine movie star and Billy Baldwin was someone actually good at acting. Except that doesn't really do it either. So just imagine that Drew Barrymore, today, is the sister of Paul Newman at the height of his acclaim. And she kills Abraham Lincoln. But again, let's spare a thought for Edwin Booth. It's 1865. And Edwin is the greatest actor in the United States. The late, great Junius Brutus Booth, 
is now remembered as Edwin's father, instead of Edwin being remembered as his father's son. And then one night, his youngest brother kills the president. His baby brother John shoots the savior of the union in the back of the head, while the man is just trying to take in a play with his wife. Edwin Booth is driven from the stage. He retires. Having worked so hard to step out of his father's shadow, he is overshadowed instantly and permanently by his little brother. Which is enough of a story. But I like to think about one more moment in Edwin's life. Not the one that takes place in Manhattan, when he sees a man fall onto the train tracks, only to realize when he pulls the man to safety that he had just saved the life of Abraham Lincoln's son. No, the moment I like to think about occurs in 1866, a year after his brother martyrs the president, after the barn he's hiding out in is burned, after the conspirators are hung, after Lincoln is buried, after Whitman writes when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed, after being shocked and depressed and sure he'll never be able to act again, Edwin is coaxed out of retirement to play Hamlet for one night on Broadway. And he's sure he'll be booed, or worse. And he knows he couldn't blame anyone if they did. And he waits in the wings to hear his cue to walk out as Hamlet, to hear from Horatio about his father's ghost. And he steps onto the stage, and the crowd applauds, and applauds, and applauds. And applauds. 